Y'all wanna hear something absolutely hilarious? I wake up this morning, I'm like, you just check my phone. Look at my phone, I usually look at my comments like I usually do. Got more comments than I usually saw, so I was like, what the heck is going on here? Open up my, uh, what? Yeah, I'm filming. I see people are commenting on a new video. I'm like, yo, what? <laughs> So apparently, I scheduled the video to drop for 12 o'clock a.m. And I don't know at what point in schooling I messed up or, or something, but I always confuse 12 a.m. with 12 p.m. Not sure which where the 12 which 12 it is. So 12 a.m. I think is basically noon instead of midnight. 12 a.m. is midnight and 12 p.m. is noon. So I'm like, wow, okay, like you messed up, dog. <laughs> What's going on? Time to get some berries. There's absolutely no reason why I should say it like that. Like, time to get some berries. Still getting used to this vlog thing. students on the barber system. I noticed there was a few haircut entries that I have to critique and do not want to let them wait any longer. And there definitely are some good ones on here. Wait, let me show you. Like, look at this, bro. Ruben Rivera, always dropping fire on here. And I gotta, you want me to critique this. Like, bro, it looks dope. Ruben Rivera again, very dope work. And here we got a little video. Anybody who's watching this channel and is a part of the system, but is not a part of the group, make sure you log back into your system, log back into your, your account, and then check the PDF file that was uploaded, and you can see all the instructions to make sure that you can get all the value that you purchased. And um, I'll just type in what I think about your haircuts, how you can improve, and how you can use the system. Yeah, but so far, we definitely have some dope drops, dope haircuts, and it's really dope to see you guys really doing well. critiquing haircuts is because I get to understand and remember where I was when I was starting and what I'm seeing in all the haircuts that I'm critiquing is that like common problems I'm seeing common problems one of the most common problems which is what I just saw in the one I critiqued is the blend being much better on the sides than it is on the back blends on the side is a lot easier because hair is typically less dense on the sides hair density is the amount of hairs that grow per square inch but texture is the thickness of the hair. Not only is the density less on the sides, but the texture can be less sometimes as well. With that being the case, fading is easier on the sides and harder on the back. Gotta spend more time, go shorter in other areas just to get the, sh the same look. So today's Friday. On Fridays, only work from nine to 4.30, so let's get to work. just a habit i don't know if it's like the best thing to do in my mind having metal blades just sit down for a while we'll have them rust so before i start i spray in oil every clipper
towels for everybody. This is my guy Jaden, and I figured there would be no better time to show you guys what I was talking about earlier than on his hair. He came in a little uh, damp, and his, his hair came in a little damp, so just dried it up a bit and did a little shape before we start the fade. At first, I wanted to show you guys the difference between fading up and fading down. I'm still going to show you guys that, but I just messed up in the demonstration. Fading down is when you start with the darker areas and move towards the light areas. This way, the hair reveals imperfections slowly, and you can see what you did there. So I did that on the first quadrant of the head. Now, fading up, which is what a lot of you guys start doing, is not the most, not the sketch way to do it. Like, I sketch in haircuts, you know, and you start, we start light and you're moving up. You see how, like, the head starts revealing itself as you go up. It's not the best for making mistakes or anything like that. So they had just refine the blend. And now we move to the back. So you know how I said earlier how a lot of people leave it darker in the back because they haven't blended as well. The hair has more density and the thicker hair follicles. We'll see the effect of that shortly. Fading down here, and I really love the fading down technique. You can see it, it kind of mentally, I feel you can create a softer fade that way. And I kind of left it in the middle of the camera's in the way, so you see that blend is not finished in that middle area. But see, now I actually have to work that dark area more. What I'm actually doing here is I'm moving my clipper up closer. I'm cutting closer in higher areas to make it equal out on the sides. And just to make sure if it wasn't clear already, I do not cut hair like this <laughs> at all. I'm only doing this strictly for demonstration purposes. Had you guys in mind. So I just used Jaden to try and show you guys something. And I know it looks a little weird. There's a, it's real heavy back there, but there's a lot of submissions where I see where that heaviness is still there. And it's, it's just cause people tend to be afraid to cut it even shorter. It's dark there because it's not short enough. The transition isn't gradual enough, so I have to go down. You see the one is slightly taking away that hair, but as I'm watching it, as I'm looking at the hair still not cutting down, I still need to go shorter. I, I close my lever. Now it's even getting shorter. And you see that blend lightening up. It's lightening up slightly, and I still see the line that was there that I'm trying to take out. So I put the one down, and I take out with a zero. This is the zero guard from the my Gamma Plus Ergos. Playing the lever as if it doesn't go away, I close it. You can still see that it's uh, still present. And for those who are in the system, this is the detailed section of the system where you're kind of refining the blend and using the corner of the blade. See how high my blade is? There's no guard on this. And I'm using the corner of the blade just to lighten up that area. And this is what it takes to actually get a fade. It's not just taking lines and making lines and taking them out. It's controlling lightness, focusing on areas and really intricately adjusting the fade as you see fit as you go. Two techniques I utilize as well, just to control the darkness, especially going into longer hairs, is clipper over comb. I do a lot of clipper over comb, because what it allows you to do is adjust your length just at the flick of a wrist, just at the turning of your wrist, rather. 
And the other technique that I use that I really love to do because there's a lot of adjustment within it is a freehand. Again, this is the detail portion of the system. And there we go. That really refines that blend, man. The thought it would be dope to just show you guys just a little bit what to do with the back area. I see that's a problem for a lot of you. And when you're creating lines, it's harder to fix that problem. So hopefully that clip really helped you guys out. What's funny, what's funny about clippers, right? Clippers and clipper companies, they're all made with a certain person in mind, right? The traffic is probably extremely loud, my bad. But I wanna, uh, just for consumers out there, you know, young consumers, beginner consumers, I think it's important for you guys to know that all clippers aren't made for everybody. And just because somebody says that a clipper is dope or they love a clipper, it's one of the best clippers, I always find it interesting that you can always tell a person's clientele by the tools that they, they love to use, you know? If you just got straight clippers, I can tell you probably don't do much shear work and you don't get much long, straight, wavy hair. You know, if you love a taper blade and you don't have a fade blade, you probably don't get skin fade. If you don't have shears, you probably don't, um, you don't have uh, a bunch of shears, you probably don't do much scissor work. If you don't have different combs, you don't see the importance of those different combs, different teeth, the amount of teeth and all that. You probably are not aware of the, the, the strengths and the weaknesses. And it's the same that goes for, uh, for clipper companies, right? All clipper companies don't solve all problems. And I know if you probably have a, a, a Babyliss. Babyliss right now cares about like customization. You can see what a clipper company is focused on if you just look at just look at their website. Like so, for instance, just just do this. Just do this for a second. Go to the wall website and just try to purchase a clipper. Don't like don't put it in the cart because that can match with their analytics. So just like you'll, you'll see that it's formatted in hair textures for one. If you do a lot of on the head or off the head hair, you know they're really focused on process, right? If you look at wall, they really care a lot about what you do on the day to day and they're trying to solve that in their business on the website. Now, if you look at Babyliss, Babyliss right now is marketing an app, change the color of a lever and the base and the bar, top part and the blade and all that. Babyliss is focused a lot on what your clipper looks like. I got way too much stuff, dog. Way too much stuff.